Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group. Thanks for joining me in today's video. Before we start, take a second to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to click on the notification bell icon so you don't miss our next live stream right here on YouTube every afternoon. Don't forget your free morning brief waiting for you at ssftg.com slash brief. From there, you can get your trading day off on the right foot with the major DP levels, as well as a quick technical overview for the major six markets that we trade, the NQ, ES, GC, CL, 6E, and of course, Bitcoin, as well as the occasional stock here and there. Maybe you're looking to get a full game plan for the day, week, or month? Check out the join button below. Level 1 subs get a brand new members-only video every single morning going over our major six markets and the game plan for the day. In addition to that, once a week, I launch a weekly brief, and of course, once a month, we have our monthly brief. All members gain access to our private Discord chat server, and if you really want to get into the nitty-gritty, check out the live analysis room for level 2 subs, where you can see my screens in real time during the New York Stock Exchange Open. So today I wanted to take a minute to expand even further on volume and how I use it while watching something like tick chart anomalies. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, stay tuned because it's going to be pretty interesting. Volume can be an incredible tool to have in your arsenal. Can. The emphasis on can mainly because it comes down to context. If you're not reading the context correctly volume will just help you down the rabbit hole towards oblivion, right? Uh, if you remain open to what the market's telling you, volume can give you a major heads up when a trend is possibly done, a reversal is coming, a breakout is ready, the list goes on, right? Uh, so when we zoom into a 500 tick chart, on the volume, as you would suspect, is very level around 500 to 600 contracts. Go figure, right? But what becomes incredibly interesting is when you dig into an extremely fast time frame, something like uh, a 10 second chart or a 50 tick chart. It doesn't matter just so long as it's very, very fast. The more candles, the better, right? So if we switch to a 50 tick chart really quick, you'll see what I'm talking about. So when we zoom in, you'll very easily see, especially when we zoom out, uh, there are some massive volume spikes. And these volume spikes just, I mean, they can stand out way above some of the other volume. And that's where we can zoom in a little bit and analyze what the market's doing and more importantly, how aggressively is it doing it? Uh, so if we go back to a 500 tick and we look at, uh, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to, uh, Right here, sure, we've got some volume bumps right there. Uh, so we've got a nice little volume bump there and we'll look at the candles, that all happened at the top. So uh, up here, it's kind of difficult to see. I mean, yeah, we know there's volume that came in, but it doesn't really tell us where it came in, how it came in. These, This isn't really narrow enough. It's a very broad spectrum. Uh, there's another one right there. There's some really good volume uh, over here as well. So let's narrow into a couple of these spots uh, on a faster time frame so we can see what I'm talking about here. So if we go to a 50 tick, this is where we can really start seeing some things of interest happen. We can start pinpointing where did that volume actually occur and how drastic was it, right? If we look over here, we can see while the market is moving its way, uh, we have these little bursts of increasing volume. You could almost draw a trend line across them. Uh, so we can catalog what's going on here, right? We can see exactly what candle that happened on. So we can use one of my favorite tools, uh, which is right here, the order flow volume profile. And we can draw that directly on top of the few candles there. And we can see exactly where that volume took place. Now, the cool thing about this is, this is where we can start deriving context. What did the market do in response to this? Did it go through it? Did it use it as support, resistance, etc.? cetera? Uh, well, realistically, if we look at where this took place, it seems like a lot of volume took place just a handful of ticks above the highs, and the market did hold it as respect, backed off, and broke through it. Well, that would suggest profit taking. Right now, another confirmation of profit taking is that gradual increase. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my cursor here. Uh, that gradual increase in volume. There's no sudden burst. That's just profit taking. The market's going higher, and people are 
getting out of their position. It's pretty straightforward. But there are other times where it'll give us some really, really big clues, like this gigantic chunk of volume. There is an increasing volume on the way. It's one humongous spike. This is where we can derive even more information. What happened here, right? Why in the world was so much volume traded inside there? The volume was so high that we would be able to go back quite a ways and still see everything that took place. Uh, so it's fairly obvious what happened. Now we know where the volume came in because we can see it's happened on that candle right there. So contextually, what does this look like? Right. Well, we have an uptrend. Gigantic chunk of volume that came in after the market pulled back a little bit and started encroaching on the highs and pulling back again. Uh, and didn't really go down, right? If this was a huge chunk of, of selling volume, like new sellers coming in trying to push the market down, overthrowing the buyers, then wh where are the sellers, right? So we see this massive amount of selling, huge sell wall shows up, and the market just goes right back up through it like nothing happened. And then it comes back down, holds it as support, 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 support. That would suggest that buyers are doing what, right? Well, they're trying to buy the low, but that could also mean, remember, you got to keep in mind, this is a 50 tick chart. <laughs> this is an extremely fast time frame. This whole area up here might be one big profit taking zone for traders. And this hit right there, given that the market looks like it was pulling back when it hit it, might have just simply been a stop, right? Someone trailing up along the way with a big move. They don't want to give the profit back and they get stopped out. Contextually, that fits, right? Because if it were new sellers, the market would have fallen apart but it didn't, it held there. So buyers just absorbed those stops and tried getting a continuation back up again. Uh, so very, very useful information in telling you what's going on behind the scenes. And if you go a little bit further here, we can see another one where we had a slight gradual increase and then just wham, one giant wall. Okay, zoom in a little bit, see what happened. Why did that wall come in right there, right? What happened? Oh, well, fairly obvious right it seems like somebody got a target filled maybe might be a new limit order to be a buyer might be sellers taking profit whatever the reason may be that's probably a giant limit order that got filled uh given that it just it all hit at one place and that one place happens to be below the range lows filling in the candle gap oh man you can see how everything lines up when you start stacking these volumes and when you get the volume in the right place and the market's telling you what's going on in a logical zone of interest you just know exactly what to do sometimes uh and other times it will give you a heads up when you're wrong and, and when to start thinking you know hey maybe i maybe i need to start getting out of this or uh you know maybe it, maybe i my my original reason for the trade isn't holding true anymore we're starting to see the volume shift use this information to your advantage. It can be a huge asset in your in your trading tool belt. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully you find it useful, interesting, entertaining, all that fun stuff. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Enjoy the rest of the day. I hope you have a great one and we will see you all in the next video. Thanks.